And we're live. Good day, Whiskey Brothers and Sisters. Today is a very special broadcast of the Whiskey Book Club's Canadian Whiskey Journey. As always, we are honored to have you, the viewer, and our panel with us today. <coughs> All these cats on this side, I should say. All good. My name's Dolph. I'm the president of the Alberta Scotch Society, founder of the Whiskey Book Club, and I'm your host tonight. For those of you who are new to us, well, I'll just tell you a little bit what we're about. We're a group of whiskey geeks, every single one of us, whiskey geeks. And we love to share a dram and our passion for reading all at the same time. But our reading's mostly about whiskey right now, so that's what we're focusing on. The choice of our present tome, our third book. It's one right there. For those of you who are new to us, well, I'll just tell you a little bit what we're about. Well, it's initially inquired. I hear some feedback from someone back Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy right here, our present tome, it's our third book, and it was inspired initially by my sense of adventure, my desire to go on the whiskey trail, the and the bourbon trail down south. Everyone I've talked to, I've been jealous of them all for so long, but for four months, we've been on our own trail, the Canadian whiskey journey. Why? Because we have tons of history. We got tons of whiskey. We got tons of other types of alcohols, like the ones back here above the book. Tons. And we have the book. So thanks to Bla Blair and Davin's Tome, our tour guide book, with lots of pictures, which is good for all of these guys on the side. We all need our pictures. It gives us all the maps, directions, suggestions, checklists that we needed in the past over these past four months to give us the direction, to give us the inside track on all the distilleries that we thought was the places to go. And we did. We went there. So Davin and Blair will, for the last time in our 2020 year book club, be our spirits guides. It's a little bit sad, but they might be back one day or maybe they'll jump in sometimes if they don't like what we're saying. They want to correct us in the future. It's all good. We're going on a retrospective journey. This is retrospective journey number one out of two tonight. We will not do an after dram. We're just going to have these two journeys because we're talking about the 14 distilleries that we met. And that's a lot of information. You're going to see the pictures of everyone that was involved on all of them. We're going to have all, well, their favorite moments, really, of those times, the memorable moments, the things that stick out in our memory. And when we're done this hour... Stick around. We're going to continue with the fun for our second retrospective broadcast, and it's going to be five minutes after this one ends. So let's start our roundtable introductions, and we've done this before, 14 times before to be exact, with your names, your other platform handles, and what you've prepared for your drams tonight. Now, I've, I have three, so but I just want to find out what you guys have. We haven't talked about it. We usually do, so this is very interesting. And... Like always, we're going to start with Davin. We're going to go Blair. And then in alphabetical order, we're going to do Dave, Drew, Kent, Nicole, and Sheila. Or we might actually do Drew and Sheila at the same time because we'll share in the same screen. So let's do that. Davin, you're up. <laughs> Hi, I'm Davin DeCurgmo. Along with Blair Phillips, I uh, wrote the Definitive Guide to Canadian Distilleries. This is Whiskey Book Club, but there's a lot of other spirits in here, a lot of gin, a lot of vodka, all kinds of really interesting spirits, Amaro, and so on. You can get me online at D-A-V-I-N-D-E-K, at Davin D-E-K. And I'm starting off tonight with Rupert's Exceptional Canadian Whiskey from Eau Claire Distillery. Nice. Excellent. Good choice. Thank you, sir. Hi, Blair Phillips. Oops. Yes. Yeah, the co author of the Definitive Guide to Canadian Distilleries. Uh, tonight, I am trying some of this, some elderflower liqueur from Odd Society, but I have several on tap for later. Good. And Dave, you're up. Uh, <laughs> it's you, it's you, come on, Dave. Come on, come on. Coming from my basement again, you can get me at uh, Yukon Dave underscore EDM. And I started out tonight with a beautiful pickled carrot jar I got from Black Cat. And I'll probably go to shelter point number one. I got some stock and barrel. And I got my first bottle for my rum collection from Gunpowder and Rose. Excellent. So, yeah. 
it's all the table space I have. And you'll tell us where you found that later on because we finally got it here in Edmonton. So Dave will tell us that when you're on I that. Didn't, I didn't get it in Edmonton. Okay. Mm. Oh. All righty. <laughs> Jeez, I spilled right, juice so over it. Go with our, our duo right beside them, Drew and Sheila. Hi, I'm uh, Drew Semper. Been following, following along in the book, uh, doing the journey. I am starting tonight with uh, social distancing from uh, Douglas. Nice. Ooh. <laughs> Is that the one we ordered? Uh, that's the one I ordered the day of the uh, event. Perfect. I am uh, Ann Coney in all of my social media, uh, Sheila Semper, and I am starting my night with uh, Two Brewers 20 Innovative Release, which is um, from Yukon Spirit, or sorry, Two Brewers. Um, they also do beer under Yukon Spirit. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. hey, Kent, you're up. Hi, my name is Kent. And off camera, here is Cheryl's. Hi, uh, Cheryl. I hope my whiskey asked as well. And tonight I am doing a blonde French from Eau Claire's Distillery. And the recipe's in the book. Oh, well, yeah, they have to buy the book to get the recipe. You're just yep. teasing them, just a little tease. That's okay. And Cheryl, cheers. I've got the Amero Pasta from Odd Society. Ooh, nice. All right. And Nicole. Hey there, I'm Nick. I have been following along and hanging out with everyone as we do our little guide across Canada. And tonight I'm starting with a dive into Dylan's Rye. Nice. Ooh, lovely. And then back to me. And I said three. So what I have is a Negroni with noteworthy gin. And this uh, was the first gin I ever liked. So that was that was a big one for me. So I, I wanted to do a Negroni with oak. And the Odd Society, this is their individual cask program. So people on this. So I got that from there. And I, I couldn't stop. So I grabbed the shelter point. And I had to stop at the Eau Claire because I, I wanted to do the ride that we finally found from Eau Claire. But Laura told me to stop because I have two sections or two segments to do. To do yeah. so i'm good i'm pretty happy the way it is so let's uh let's share the screen and uh i'm gonna start this off just a little bit of background so uh this is our first retrospective davin blair we've all heard this but i just want to get this started with you both and ask you why you both decided to write this book just a really simple thing you've said it many times before but i think it's a good way to start this off <laughs> Shoot, Blair. Oh, no. <laughs> right, you're up. Um, I, I strongly suggest going back and watching some past episodes. That story. <laughs> um, well, Davin and I wrote for Whiskey Magazine for a couple of years. Um, we did a, a travel series across Canada, an adventure series, and um, all these stories started to develop from there. Uh, we started to visit all these little distilleries, big distilleries, small distilleries, medium distilleries. And um, it just all came together when we were traveling through Newfoundland um, to, to get this book going. And uh, that, that's the abbreviated version. Um, Davin may have some more eloquent things to say, but... <laughs> but you're done. All right, <laughs> Davin, do you have anything to add before we start? Well, it was a long time in the making. I think it was a, a couple of years of hard work at the end and a couple of years of, of traveling around and kind of putting the idea together before that. Um, and uh, so it's it's really the, the culmination of probably probably four years or four or five years of thinking and figuring it out and finally, finally writing it. And uh, I'm honestly very happy with it. It's... Uh, and yeah. all the feedback we get from the distilleries is is, is very good. So yeah. we'll, and, and that's that's the most important thing, really. And selling the books and making a little bit of money for all your work. Well, we have to sell books. <laughs> kind of yeah. important too. Uh, let me explain how this is going to play out over the next hour and a little bit. So two weeks ago, I asked all of our panel members to revisit their broadcasts and think of a few things such as what's your favorite moment, memory, or interesting fact. So we're going to do that. 
And everyone that was on there that week will have two minutes to speak to it to ensure that this doesn't become a four-hour show. <laughs> because if we have five people doing two minutes, that's 10 per section. And we're doing seven each, so that's 70 minutes. So I know it's going to go over the hour. But we want to limit it because we have tons to say. We were all very passionate about what we saw on air and off air and the after after jams when we talked about people. But we're going to keep this, and this is hard for me too, to keep it under two minutes because some of us like to talk a whole bunch. But I am the bugger that's going to keep us on track, and it'll either be this or it'll be my uh, iPhone making some other weird sound. So I think that's good. I think I think we can figure this out. We're all good. We're all adults, and I'm uh, I, I have complete faith in every one of us. So great, great. Dolphin took you three minutes to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Our very first stop was on June 13, 2020, and we, Davin, Blair, Nicole, and I visited Gordon and Miriam from the Odd Society Spirits. Oh, and do we see the little icon in the top corner? Yep, and the picture of the people. That was, from the that was from that one. So we're going to do that at the beginning of every one. We'll put the icon. We'll put the people. We'll see it all. And it'll go pretty well. Uh, page 32 of the book, you'll see them. We were drinking Prospector Rye. We were drinking this right here. And we were dazzled by the artwork displayed in the distillery in the tasting room. Nicole, let's start with you. You are our very first guest that night. Nicole, what was your favorite moment? memory, interesting fact, or anything you want to touch on, really? You know what? It was just hanging out with them in the tasting room afterwards, seeing the artwork, seeing the environment, going, I need to get there. That's more than anything that struck me. is like, I need to get there and sit in that room. Virtually, it was great, but to sit there with them, I think, will be amazing. And I can't look forward. Can't get there fast enough, I think. That was very good. You made up for my extra three minutes, uh, David and Blair. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out to both of you every time, and whoever wants to speak first, go ahead, and whoever wants to add something at the end, do that. So I didn't want to pick on one person. I'll just throw it out there every time. So David and Blair. Okay, I'll start. We'll alternate. The story by sure. story. Um, I really just loved visiting uh, Odd Society Distillery. It's really got a great atmosphere. And I love the, the artwork they have. They had a tattoo artist do the, the, that artwork in, in, the, uh, in the, the bar. But you know what? Since we did our broadcast, they've started painting the ends of the barrels. And they've got barrels with real murals on them. It's be just beautiful work. And uh, I also was delighted to see, uh, to see Gordon and his two brothers and their dad in a swimming pool celebrating their dad's <laughs> birthday. <laughs> And the barrel ends, you can see that if you're on their Facebook page or on Instagram, they show it everywhere. So they, every okay. time a new one's done, they show them. It looks great. Blair, anything to add, bud? Yeah. No, I, I sort of wanted to touch on what they do really well. Um, they, they, they are very, uh, they make a lot of ingredients for cocktails. Like they make a Maro, they make um, this elderflower liqueur, uh, they make their own vermouth. And the creme de cassis, like they're yeah. fantastic, right? But the, the good thing about Canadian distilleries and, and how they're approaching liqueurs like this is they're really dialing back on the sweetness and concentrating on the, the flavors of the main ingredient. Um, so you're not getting these sticky, sweet, syrupy drinks. You're getting these really balanced, delicious spirits. Uh, and this is hugely underrated category right now in Canada. But the great thing about um, uh, what they're doing is that they're making all these cocktail ingredients, but at the same time, they're good on their own so you don't even want to make cocktails with them like they don't want to they make fantastic cocktails don't get me wrong but you want to try these on your own so you can sample them and enjoy all the different spirits individually um they're that good so that's something that 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 uh i took home from them was they make some good stuff anyone else want to add into this before we go on the watching at the artwork was fabulous that they did behind the uh tasting bar and all the uh bar uh, the barrel ends like they're super cool <laughs> i agree and what happened with them happened with most people too as we go on uh it was our first time we saw them so for me 
I didn't know how the different owners or dist master distillers would interact with everybody else. And they were kind of like everyone else. They were excited, but you could tell they were a little bit nervous and it took them about five minutes. And then they were great. Gordon was going and you could hear Miriam in the background. They're laughing and having fun. And that was, that's what did it for me the very first time I heard that and saw how much fun it was for them. I knew it was for me, but I'm giddy about the stuff anyways. But when we saw other people doing the same thing, made me really happy and encouraged that it was probably going to go on pretty well because this was a big commitment. Four months from all of us is a big commitment. It was perfect. Thank you. Next, we're going on to Shelter Point. Let's get a picture of Shelter Point up there. There we go. And that's a good looking guys there. And after they were able to actually get the internet going, uh, that was Jacob and Leon. So uh, it's on page 62 of the book. Davin Blair, Kent, Dave, and I had a fantastic visit with Jacob. Uh, he's the distillery manager and Leon, the master distiller. We're drinking their Montfal double barrel. Montfal double barrel. And uh, what was I think it was the whiskey's the sunshine liqueur for the after draft. Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Doesn't matter. I had lots. I already had some of their stuff, and I ordered two bottles after. So, uh, Kent. Let's go with you. Let's start up. What was okay. your moment, memory, interesting fact, buddy? Um, honestly, the light show was, <laughs> oh yeah, okay. yeah, which a lot of the memories actually came from the after dram, and I don't know if that's alcohol induced or what, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, they had a lot of problems in the first part, getting their internet running and finally they moved into their warehouse and they were, uh, showed us all their lighting, which gave us the star Wars effect as it kind of blinked in and out. And it kind of, yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, landscape around there, and all, yeah, like you say, the picture that was kind of neat with the two jets crossing. Yeah, and uh, Davin, you said that was what you you, you made us uh, focus on. I'm not hearing you well, Dolph. Oh, sorry, oh. Davin. In that picture, uh, you made us focus on the clouds because we didn't see. Oh, yeah, that. the St. Andrew's Cross in the sky. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah, it was really cool. and uh, yeah, that. The light speed, I forgot about that. Good one. Yeah. Davin. No, not Davin. Dave, Dave, you're up. I love to listen to the Davin talk about his VIP helicopter tour. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like I was just thinking, who who gets chauffeured around on a helicopter? Not us. No, yeah, I'm, not sure. yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Only a few distilleries have done that. Oh, that's the sign. Uh, Whiskey asks, can you read that for me? Because Davin and Blair, I want your opinion on what he wrote. Because we, uh, a couple of us got the bottles of uh, of Smoky. Yeah, Smoky Point. Smoke, yeah. Smoke Point. Smoke Point Whiskey. Well, what did you write on it? Because long I think may your, your long reek. Your, yeah. Long yeah. Something leak. Can someone reek. help you with that expression? Long may your lum reek. Wrong okay. okay. No. Nope. Well, right. isn't is it isn't Reek from uh, Pete? Yes. Right. But yeah, I didn't know the lum. Maybe it's your bum Reek. I have no idea. <laughs> but I was no, just that's that's his, his writing's almost as bad as yours, Dolph. <laughs> your your lum Reek. That's a K. Okay. R E E K. All right. It's a good picture, guys, and uh, I'm glad oh, that yeah. we got that bottle. But. I don't know what it means. So thank you very much, Leon. And thanks for signing them for us. And if you're watching, send us a text message saying what that means. Because maybe that's that's a, something. Or comment on the side. Maybe he's here. Davin, Blair. Yeah, no, I, I, the biggest story for Shelter Point is definitely Davin's helicopter ride. And, and I think the closest <laughs> I got to that was going over a hill, but too quick in my car and having that woo feeling in your stomach. But uh, yeah. It, it's um, and and the thing is, their their whiskey is just as exciting as as Davin's helicopter story, I should say as well. Absolutely, and, and a lot less unsettling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's poetic. You still remember it, Devin? Oh, it it was spectacular. I'm telling you, yeah. The that distillery and the farm are so beautiful from the air. What they showed me was they have this great big raspberry farm you know on their property i can't remember how big it is 14 acres let's say and they they uh, harvest raspberries which they send to california 
No, and of course, really. in, in Canada, we're drinking, we're, re, we're eating raspberries that were grown in California, in California. So we're kind of trading back and forth. But uh, yeah, it, that, it was spectacular. The best part was when we were flying along over the mountain and we all of a sudden came to a cliff. So we're flying along really low, and the ground's underneath, and all of a sudden there's a drop. I think he said it was 30 Ks straight down. Jeez. No, actually, I'm kidding. But <laughs> how did I like know? that? He said, How did you like that? I said, Not so much. Because <laughs> of course you can see through the glass and the floor of the helicopter. You know, everything was it was it was wonderful. It's one of the it's the best helicopter ride I've ever had. Nice. <laughs> Is it how many have you well, had? Kent, read that for us, buddy. <laughs> how about Cheryl read it? <laughs> Somewhere. So could, basically, it literally translates to long may your chimney smoke, signifying may you live long. Thank you very much, Leon. I appreciate that. Live long and prosper, buddy. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> or as other geeks, we got every type in here, right? I'd say, too, that Shelter Point is in the, the first rank of uh, of uh, distilleries making whiskey in Canada, micro distilleries making whiskey in Canada. They're there are four or five that are really ready to break out. Yeah, they're you know, really go international, and this is one of them. Their stuff is 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 just it's just fantastic. Yeah. So, and I do like the cork. Some people have a problem with that yeah. the glass cork. I kind of like it. Tell you the truth, it seems fine. Yeah. All right. Stop number three. We were at the Dub Glass Distillery, which is on page 76 of the book. Don, the Whiskey Dive, and Drew were there, and we drank Steve Lee, he's the owner, New Make, and the pre-made Negroni. And that was really important because we decided after the second one that I was really bad at making a cocktail. So he did that for me. It was fantastic. It was very nice of him. Uh, Drew. Let's go with you, buddy. It's time for you to tell us your favorite moment, memory, or interesting fact. But just take a look at these good-looking guys. Uh, he didn't wear his orange uh, suit, though, with, until the after jam for us. But I didn't get that picture. Oh, there you go. Thank you, man. Thank you. I love that suit. I, I don't know. I, I quite enjoyed uh, off-camera when we were talking about all the uh, Masonic uh, symbols that he's hidden across all of his bottles. Um, the uh, that uh, it's not going to show up too well. The um, South Okanagan Trail, yeah, distillery trail that he uh has his little page on, and um, listening to everything that he did to help the uh BC craft distillery rules yeah. all come into uh into effect to make a lot of other people's job easier to start up. His political involvement, him yeah. jumping in, yeah. yeah. All righty, Blair and Devin. Well, you know what? The most the <laughs> best fun we had working working with uh, with Grant to put this uh, book together was getting that picture of him in the orange suit <laughs> because he submitted a picture almost identical to that one, yeah. And I thought it was wonderful. Okay. And so we said, this is going in the book. And uh, then I uh, sent an order. He sent a note to the to the uh, photographer, said, uh, we'd like to use your photo. We need to get permission. And the photographer said, absolutely not. You can't use it. So what we had to do is get another photographer to go out and shoot that picture. So that it was, that's not exactly the same. So it was actually better, actually, than the original. And put that on there, but I just I just like the idea of Grant Steveley wearing a wearing an orange suit in an old broken down house like that. So that was a lot of fun. It's a great place um, to to visit to, and you know he and Jovi are very welcoming. They have so many barrels in the back. Uh, you know, you, I don't know if they could even get one more barrel in there. And you see you see Steveley up there climbing around like a spider going all over these barrels, trying to get you samples and things like that. And he's so close to the ceiling, you think he's going to smash his knuckles when he's pulling the, the whiskey out. <laughs> Just, yeah, honestly, it, it's a wonderful place. It's, uh, I really, truly enjoyed it. And I, I really am very, very fond of, uh, of Grant Stevie as well. I've known him probably for 10 years, and he's just just the coolest, most giving guy you've ever, you'd ever want to meet. Nice. Good sentiment. Thank you. Blair. Um, 
Yeah, for me, the, the, the thing that really stands out for Douglas is uh, back when Davin was going through the Okanagan, he, he sent me this big box of samples um, to start doing some write-ups um, and get a head start on it. And one of the best things was uh, Grant had put in, I think it was about half a dozen of cast samples because they didn't have he didn't have whiskey yet at that time. Um, it was just cast samples, and and uh, it was just really nice to be able to feature um, some preview whiskey in our book for a tasting note. Uh, and I think there was only maybe two or three of those in the whole entire book that got um, uh, that that made it that were good that were so good in this raw form uh, to, to just, you know, le legitimately taste it and comment on it. Um, yeah, it was, nice. that's, what's, that's what I remember from, uh, from them the most. And I remember, well, his political involvement I liked a lot, but, but uh, the story of him moving from the Canadian Rockies to the BC interior and kind of his <laughs> business acumen. So I didn't understand why he left. But then as he described it as a foot traffic area, and he kind of went into that, and he's got a business mind. So it was kind of nice to see that kind of aspect, and it was kind of the first time. My favorite part, though, was not that. My favorite part goes between Shelter Point and Douglas, where we were in the after jam or the after after jam, and they were telling us about a 2 a.m. phone call that the owner of Shelter Point <laughs> yeah. oh, geez, yeah. gave yeah. to uh Douglas, not Douglas, <laughs> uh, and we can't say what he said, but it, it was Why a very we? wonderful conversation about <laughs> the, that I showed you just before. So that was my favorite part. Yeah. All right. So, so uh, I got else really quickly. Yeah. yeah if you could put that picture up of everybody again, because I loved uh, uh, Blair's uh, Department of Corrections shirt he was wearing. <laughs> yeah. There you go. It's orange though, right? He, he was going. I'm sure it orange. says. I'm sure it says DOC on the back. Uh, it does. Yeah, that was three, four, six, nine, seven. Eight. That's good. You uh, had how seven. many hours of footage to take a snapshot of of us, and that's the one that makes the cut. <laughs> and that's the one. We have lots of pictures, but stop number four is uh, two brewers, page one oh five, co-owner Bob Baxter. And we drank the recently released number 20 that Sheila has right now, my wife's favorite. And uh, and there's the I'm asleep. Yeah, it's great. Number 20. And the yet to be released 21. It wasn't released yet when we had it. And the after dram is where Dave, Sheila, and I dabbled with their Haskap lemonade gin and tonic, which was really good. My wife took most of it, but I had some. But Dave, I want to start with you this time because you didn't want to be on the show. And we, we told Dave, everyone's saying, Dave, you have to go on. Dave was saying, I don't want to be on the show. And I think it's because he didn't want to outshine his boss or no. he didn't want to make a mistake. One or the other. I'm not sure which one, but we fought, we got him on the show. So, Dave, I want your favorite moment from that show, Memory Interesting Fact. Buddy. Well, I'm not worried about making a mistake because I do it every night. All right. <laughs> but I didn't think it was fair for me to be on there because I work for the brewery. So that was my concern. My favorite part was how many times I've heard Davin tell me he doesn't like 20. <laughs> he said that, it that's happened. Up. But that's no, happened on many shows. No, I did not say that. that he, what I said was it was the least favorite of your, my least favorite of your whiskeys. I didn't say I didn't like it. Okay. I said it was my least favorite. Well, you said I it two said weeks I, ago, too. So. <laughs> No, we you do got, have got, You have 25 whiskeys, and on my list, that is, uh, it's on my list. Yeah. Okay. So that was your yeah. there, Dave? That was it? That was the like, moment? I, like from that picture, I was obviously asleep for most of the show. Thanks for that picture. <laughs> Not everyone looks good in every picture. And the last one, my face was all contorted. So, you know, we can do yeah. it. Yeah, let's let's go. fast forward. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> Favorite moment from that day? Who? David. Oh well, my favorite moment was was going up there meeting the the guys. It was a wonderful place to to visit. They've got a really nice little bar and tasting room and gift shop at the distillery. They got a big brewery behind it, and they've got you know their still and their their barrel room and all that. Um, but Whitehorse is such a 
cool town. They've got all these bars, but it doesn't say bar on it because everybody knows it's a bar. There are only 40,000 people in town. And uh, so it just has some kind of a name on it. I like the breakfast club where you can go and start drinking at nine in the morning. Yeah. And uh, I really enjoyed going out uh, w with Alan and, and Bob and uh, finding some uh, some Yukon uh, juniper berries and, and eating them right off the right off the plant. And they were it was really quite sweet and oh, well, quite, quite a mild. I, I really enjoyed that. So and honestly, loved if, this juniper. if you're going, if people are going to visit one distillery, I would say make it be two brewers or Yukon brewers. Just because there's so much else going on in Whitehorse. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, Kent, can you put up those uh, the drinks again that you had? Laura says she wants one, by the way. And as you're doing that, Blair, your favorite moment. Oh, uh, Bob was saying that he, when Davin was criticizing the, not criticizing, when he <laughs> mentioned the, the number 20. Can we yeah. get off the topic of number 20? These guys make the best whiskey I've tasted in ages. I know, I know. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere with this. So, so Bob, Bob was saying uh, how he liked that because he doesn't like it when people like everything that comes out of two brewers. Yeah. And I'm like going, ah, oh, crap, because that's me. I, everything they do, I like. Um, so I don't know. Call me one of those guys, I guess. Hey, do you remember back when Don from Last Straw said the same thing? He says, I don't want to hear everybody tell me it's all good. He wants to hear some some other opinions. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my moment that I liked, I, and you know what? It wasn't from there. It was one I read, actually, because I can just picture both of these engineers getting together on a, uh, on a weekend, and it was uh, Easter weekend, putting together their still. So mm -hmm. I, I thought that was a great story. To tell you the <laughs> yeah. and, uh, one weekend, because we've heard many horror stories over the past 14 weeks of people like couldn't get their stills or they didn't have the directions for the stills that to figure it out themselves. And these guys did it in two days. So I, I, that was impressive. Although I did want to talk to Al. I, I really wish Al would have been on here. So that's the one thing I'm, I, I wish would happen in the future. So the guys that sold us the still, Carl, in Germany, they said, hey, we'll send a guy over to help you. They said, no, don't bother. We'll put it together ourselves. So, okay. Forget yeah. it. I'm not waiting. And they did, and they did it really, really well. All right. Stop number five. We're going to Eau Claire Distiller. Here's a picture. We'll click that. Number five. And we, we get Dar uh, or David's picture in here. He didn't last very long because... Uh, <laughs> The uh, the Wi-Fi issues were pretty bad for him, but uh, this was a great one for me and my wife because we were able to visit David, the owner, and Caitlin, the master distiller of Eau Claire, page 118, 119, by the way, prior to the broadcast. We were there on a Wednesday, I think, and they were so warm, inviting, knowledgeable about their liquids and uh, David with the local history, which was really kind of cool. So Kent, Blair, Davin, and I drank their single malt whiskey the newly released batch three. I think both Davin and Blair had that too. And in my case, after that, the Equinox. Uh, Kent, this was your second distillery in a month. So what was your takeaway, buddy, on that one? Oh, um, I kind of wish that uh, Davin was a, or David was able to uh, stay on with us a little bit longer, but he was having, every time he started to talk, his internet would freeze up. But uh, we had a wonderful time with Caitlin. She, uh, she yeah. just filled his boots like nothing, and afterwards, I was kind of actually glad that he was gone. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> she engaging? And I, I hope I hope he's not watching this. But she did such I'm a great job. Watching. She is cuter yeah. than he is, so it's understandable. <laughs> uh, well, careful, but yeah. Yeah, careful, <laughs> David. You're off. There was a comment from Dave in the side that, telling me to be careful when I made the same statement in the show. <laughs> um. I thought it was very cool that it was built on the site of the movie theater and a brothel. So it was yes. like, you know, so where do you get history cool. like that? Um, and then actually going back to the first one I was on was the first time we had the whole, uh, Gavin worked at a strip club. And again, Dave brought up the strip club in the, that show. And it became a kind of a, an undertone thread throughout every show about 
Gavin and his work at a strip club somewhere along the line. <laughs> well, Dave wasn't on. He kept asking Gavin for it. It was his oh, yeah. book, Gavin, every week, I think. It, it was either Dave was on or he was asking in the side channel about the strip club. There was I, just about every show I watched, there was some comment. Trust <laughs> Kent to bring it front and center on the book club. <laughs> Do you think that second word in my name? <laughs> but let's just be clear. Davin was not stripping at all he was yeah. he was playing he was he's an artist a musician, a musician. Yeah. just like blair was a musician although blair never went yeah. to that yeah. type of seedy atmosphere he didn't have to he was talented oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right davin and blair your favorite parts well i'm drinking rupert's whiskey tonight and i'm, I'm afraid i'm on my third dram um uh, i uh I want to help those guys with harvest some some year yeah. when they're using the horses to, to bring in the grain. I think it's very competitive to uh, to get a spot on that. But, you, you know, when, when we first um, uh, released the book or when the book was coming out in, in, in March, uh, Eau Claire w w was uh, planning to, to, ho to host us for a book launch and, a, you know, a book signing and so on. Of course, COVID, you know, you know put the boost to that. But uh, we're going to be doing a book event with Eau Claire in a couple of months. Uh, and I think Kenzie and Weinmark is involved in that as well. So they've, uh, they've been really big supporters. And I'm really, I'm really glad that, uh, that we're able to work together. And I'm really delighted with Rupert's Whiskey. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much. Then we'll go Blair and then we'll shoot it over to Nick there for a second too. Yeah, one of my favorite things about the distillery was um, Davin and I drove, uh, where were we, Davin? At, uh, I think we're at Alberta Stillers, um, and then we went down to Eau Claire, and uh, just that drive is fantastic. Like, it's it's just so scenic, and, and um, all the oil, like the, the, I think they're there for show now, but yeah, doing well, that. We're still making oil. Oh, they're still making oil, okay. Anyway, so uh, it, we went there, and I, I was blown away by their, uh, the way they presented themselves in their, in their, cocktail lounge and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, at the time, they had a modest selection of whiskeys aging. Uh, the Pear Equinox is fantastic. And and after we left uh, Eau Claire, we went to, I think, I think we went and, and did, went around the circle and went up to uh, Black Velvet. And then after we were done with Black Velvet, we we're like, we got to go back. So we went back to Eau Claire the next day. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's, it's a, that, that restaurant that's right next door that was on you gotta eat here as well Chuck no Martin's you know on. yeah it was closed when we were there so we ate at the there was a chinese restaurant on the corner oh um, it, was, it was great yeah you gotta go there you gotta go back and their burgers and they have tons of stuff but they were on several well two canadian tv shows or eat you gotta eat here type shows so yeah if you ever go back that'd be great uh, oh we're gonna go back one day yeah <laughs> uh, Nick, what you want? Well, I was sitting on the sidelines and then I was in the after after dram. And what really was a striking point for me was the history that started to come out. Uh, Eau Claire bringing up all the temperance movement, prohibition, and it actually fired a lot of interest for me to find out more about the rum runners and our history in Canada with whiskey making. And it sort of echoed a lot of the discussion that Davin and Blair was bringing up. Oh, this happened here and this happened there. And it's like, there's way more to Canadian spirits than we even recognize and it's amazing we have to keep diving into it and learn more and nick you just found a book that you put online that i think would be great if we could all yes. actually do that as well uh do you have it close by if you I do at one point maybe hold, just hold it up yeah. and we can see that or write it in the comments and for me it was both among the most uh, enjoyable and the saddest visits we ever had. And it was so sad because uh, David's internet connection was so bad, he, he couldn't stay on. But uh, what Laura and I saw the Wednesday that we were there, the passion that he had, the knowledge. And so he welcomed us in. And as soon as we started asking questions and showed the interest, he was willing to spend, he spent two hours with us just talking about everything, what they want to do. And Caitlin was there the whole time. I don't know if she tried to get away or not, but Dave kept her there, and we just we, we, we monopolized their time. And the other one was the after after dram. And Caitlin stayed on till 
it was way past midnight when we were oh, yeah. when we we're done. And I think I left at twelve thirty. And I think Kent and Nicole, I think you were still there at that point. Yeah. yeah. And there's the book, the Rum Run. That might yeah. be something we do as well because I, I love the history. And the other one she did, she talked about the Christmas gin and the uh, the gold frankincense and myrrh. And they said that they were sold out. And I finally found this. I found five bottles of it. Bought them all. Just I bought them all. <laughs> and I sold one to Kent. And I, don't, I can't remember if Nick's getting one or not. But I bought five because yeah. Sheila bought one. We On their way to Calgary, they picked that up. So that was good. Uh, it, it's just when you talk to people passionate about what they do, yeah. it convinces you that their stuff is fantastic. Yeah, and you know what? I liked it. I'm not sure what happens to the gold once it gets in the system, though, but hmm, we'll find out. What's good? Uh, anyone else? Actually, two very good quotes came out of that one. Uh, okay. The first one was on the side channel from Dave. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know if I should read it or not, but anyways, my job is to give people a hard time. Davin is an easy target. Oh. <laughs> ah, yay, Dave. You know what? I think that I have met some of the nicest people in whiskey on this show. Yukon Dave, you're one of them. And Whiskey Ass, who I'm going to call Whiskey Arse, oh, you're, you're another one of them. <laughs> is the most brilliant woman in whiskey in probably the world. Yeah. Honestly, you re really made my breakfast for me the other day, even though we're 2,000 miles apart. <laughs> it's the best way to do breakfast. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Although it is Alberta Scotch Society and not ass, so maybe you could say ours, but it does mean ass in the back. Yeah. <laughs> and, right, and, and you can blame Nicole for my nickname because she nicknamed me and I adopted it wholeheartedly. <laughs> yeah, I was there in that conversation and you were pretty eager too. That went quickly. How about it, this? Yes, I'm changing everything. Facebook is that. I'm changing everything. Any day. Yeah. Anyways, uh, the second one actually is from uh, Davin. Uh, it's, uh, Nicole touched on it. Temperance is. Uh, people that do not approve of alcohol. Alberta is people that do not approve of temperance. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, that it was definitely a fun one. And it's it close to home, so I think we have a place in our heart. So stop number six, which was Last Mountain, page 142 in Saskatchewan. Uh, Davin, Blair, Drew, and I had Braden, uh, hit the head distillers, single cask rye, and boy, was it good. And how it is good. And if you can see him, he seemed very serious in that spot. Which is kind of funny <laughs> he, was, he was fairly easy going. Yeah. Uh, but I had to tear my wife away from the rye because I love rye. And I, I keep trying to give Laura rye so she could appreciate what I do. And she never really has. But that one, she was drinking it more than me. It's like, stop. stop. I want some of that. So that's my great memory. But I'll continue. Uh, so... Who wants it? Who's up? Let's go, Davin and Blair, and then Drew, you're up. Well, I've got a soft spot in my heart for Last Mountain Distillery. Uh, I think that uh, I've known Colin since he started his distillery, and I think Colin and Meredith uh, got married at Last Mountain Lake or something like that, and that's why they've named their distillery that. So there's a great, <laughs> a great love story there. Uh, Colin is a ex-professional hockey player who does nothing but talk about what a crappy hockey player he was <laughs> and, uh, and and all the while they're turning out these really gorgeous whiskeys and you know and I, I've tasted quite a few of them for over, over the years and uh, they're really making some really wonderful stuff there I'm not sure that they uh, even really want to expand that much more. I could, could be wrong about that. But I think that the, what Colin was telling me is that he has a hard time keeping up with demand uh, for his whiskey uh, in Saskatchewan alone. So, uh, yeah, I, I've got a soft spot, a, a fond spot for, for, for Last Mountain. And uh, really, really good people, really great people. Blair? Yeah, I um, haven't said it all. Like, they're they're. Whiskey is very good. Um, I, I think they make some of the best wheat whiskey in Canada. Um, yeah, they're another distillery that just make tons and tons of good stuff. And I think uh, for anyone that was paying attention, they uh, 
they're talking about their cherry whiskey that comes out every Christmas uh, or or this time of year, I should say. And I think they're coming up on a batch pretty soon. Oh, apparently people line up down the highway for it. So if you're in the area, and they're also the dill pickle vodka. Yes, yeah, and you have to be yeah yeah they they uh, Colin kind of he was looking for something um, something original to do in vodka, and he and he came up with this dill pickle vodka idea. And I can't remember, he was telling me the story uh, behind it because um, I think there was a guy in Hawaii that, that he knew that was making vodka using pineapples and he wanted to do something that was uh, uh, just something Canadian and, and everything like that. So he decided to do a dill pickle vodka. And I, I don't think he's very excited that other people have caught on to that idea, idea and, and they're all over the place now. Um, he, when you talk to him about it, he, he, gets his, he, gets, he looks like he's about to cross check you sometimes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he wishes people would would find their own path instead of trying to emulate everyone else's spirits. And yeah, they should that. leave it to theirs. Yeah, Drew, you're up. Uh, yeah, you're I, up. I liked, uh, well, the, looking at uh, their website, their cherry whiskey is about to be released for this year. Um, not available online, not available anywhere else. Buy it at distillery only, wow. and it'll be gone in like two days. Uh, but uh, I've tr uh, like trying to get the backstory out of it that nobody seems to know. The elusive Ian and the um, who was it, uh, Mark from somewhere down the states? Yeah, yeah, I remember <laughs> that. Yeah, very. Yeah, that's, the pineapple, that's the pineapple vodka guy. Yeah. 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 So yeah, those those were the cool ones, and then yeah, let's hearing about the the other innovative ones: their cherry whiskey, their dill pickle, and what was the one they were? There's somebody else that makes another one that they say is a good mix. It's the dill pickle, and I don't remember. I'd have to go back and rewatch it again to find out what the other. Well, they had their Caesar festival as well, right? Yeah. That they that and so they made a Caesar using a mixture of their dill pickle yeah. and a different flavored one but i don't remember okay. oh that was probably the um rig hands uh, garlic that's it it was the rig yeah. hand garlic oh boy <laughs> and he was okay with the rig hand garlic he went there actually and helped yeah. them is oh, that correct i'm happy yeah. they were different and he liked the mix of the two in a single caesar yeah but he liked it that they went their own way and didn't just copy and that's how Rickhan came up with the idea that they they uh, I well I shouldn't speak for them but they went to uh, Colin um, and and they really loved his dill pickle vodka and they're looking for something they they wanted to make a Caesar vodka and uh, came up with a uh, garlic vodka idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I haven't had it yet. Has anyone on our panel had it? I've oh, yeah. had yeah I've had theirs and I've had uh, oh man what's the Lucky uh, bastard made one as well? Who did? Lucky bastard. Made a yeah. and King's yeah. Lock makes a make, makes one too. Yeah, that's on Vancouver Island, right? Yeah. No, King's Lock in uh, Lock? Okay. near Prescott. Yeah, there's that uh, the cidery in, on uh, Vancouver Island. Um, what's it called? Oh, Meridale. Meridale. They make one as well, I think. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, the Rick Hand one is it's it's if you like garlic, you're gonna love it. It's delicious. Yeah. I don't. I don't think you're going to sit there sipping it. No, no you are not. <laughs> but there's a place for it in, in our in our know? background. Yeah. What I liked is wasn't the fact really. It was just that they devoted it, a, a certain thing to Granny's gin, or it's like Granny's gin. They had that link to the family that helped them out quite a bit, and we heard about that in some other ones. But this one, it, it just seemed more of a family affair. Everyone kind of chipping in. So I yeah, like the general feel to it. Yeah, Colin's grandmother moved from England to here, I think. And she's like, where can I get some good gin? He says, I'll just make one. So That's it. Oh, yeah. And here's the one we had. So that's the single cast rye. And I was serious about my, how much my wife had. Like, there's, there's, there's one. Papers. She took it all. I loved it. Anyways, no. <laughs> she shrugs her shoulders like, so what? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's my house. I'll take half of them. Anyone else? As we go on to our final stop. All right. We're good. Our final stop in retrospective part one was at the beautiful distillery in Winnipeg called Patton Five. It's on page 155, ladies and gentlemen. The owner, 
Brock shared his whiskey, his gin, and his knowledge. The stop was indeed informative and entertaining. And my part is the informative part that I'm going to talk about later. Uh, but did we put the picture up here? We'll get the picture. Look at these guys here. And Dave, this is your third time somewhere? Yeah. All right, that's your third time. So, Dave, let's let's go with your third time. What made this third visit memorable for you? Well, there was a whole bunch of things. And I really liked the information that he gave uh, the wood in his tasting room that came from the St. Regis Hotel. And uh, it was done in 1911 in Chicago and brought up to Winnipeg. And he happened to get in there and get all that wood out of there. That was really interesting. Like, you guys remember that? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, Lots yeah, that was spectacular. What were those 10-foot-high pocket doors they had with the stained glass in them to go in and out of the kitchen? Yeah, and he yeah. even showed the, the close-up on the places where they, the people who used to work in the kitchen knocked into it with their trolleys and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, very particular. It was, the coolest yeah, it was, thing is, that if you're in the tasting room, the door into the distillery, is, is a, it's made of wood. It's, it's beautifully ornate wood. And it's a big arch like that. With and uh, if you get into the out in the tasting room, you can take a really cool picture of the still framed by these uh, by this huh. uh, arch doorway. It's it really is qu quite beautiful. But uh, Brock makes some pretty good spirits there as well. I'm uh, I've got some a little bit of their their uh, whiskey left here, which is uh, I think. Uh, very like promising. He gives on the back too. Like he, he, he was very detailed in what he gave us. Isn't that great? I love that. And I've talked to him twice since. Like hmm? I've talked to I've talked to Brock a couple times since then. So yeah, yeah, he was really nice. Blair, memories. Ah, uh, everything about that place. There, the, his history and knowledge of. Uh, not only where what his building was at one time, but yeah. he he dug back and, and found distillers in, in Winnipeg from the late teen, late nineteen hundreds. Um, that's quite spectacular. And and I I I knew well his whiskey is, was great for what uh, for that for that sample, but uh, when he tastes his other spirits, you know that it's definitely everything is really fine tuned there. He's they know what they're doing. <laughs> I, I found him I found him fascinating, entertaining to listen to. Like we could have just put him on, you know, just go and just sit back and enjoy. And so Blair, Blair did all the research on this distillery and briefed me. And then I went there, uh, Mark Coffin uh, from Whiskey Whistle was, yeah. was doing a show and I was there with Mark. And, and he took <laughs> me down to, to, to Patent 5 Distillery. We had a really great time. And I seemed very intelligent because I knew everything about the distillery. And I knew about the same yeah. reason. <laughs> that's all. That was all Blair. So yeah, well, yeah. So so I just like to thank Blair right now for making me look a lot smarter than I am. Well, they, yeah. They, they, when we wrote the book, the, uh, they hadn't opened the doors yet. He was yeah. he was still scrambling to do the finishing touches on on all that wood paneling and decor and stuff like that. So um, yeah, we we wrote that place up when they when they weren't officially open yet like they didn't even have spirits for us to try um so if we do get the opportunity to a second edition i i would love to uh rectify that and start to dig into some more brockinicisms if that's we such can do that edition yeah. 2021 and maybe one year in person uh, don't say the date we're we're still thirty thousand books away from getting a second edition <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you sent me 15 to sell to my Alberta Scotch Society for a tasting, so we're 15 closer with us. <laughs> on my part. <laughs> uh, 30,000. We just need 200 times more the amount. My favorite thing about it was, one was the beautiful decor. I loved it. I showed lots of pictures of it because I like wood and I like, well, the stained glass as well, Dave. I forgot about that. And it was <laughs> beautiful but two other things came up so uh his fight that he had with the cysts with the city itself and that oh, was yeah. because in different places so when we talked to steve lee when we talked to uh bob baxter of, of two brewers when we talked to eau claire uh they had to work really closely with the government the provincial government and that's who their fight really was with trying to manip not manipulate but 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 show them what they needed yeah. so that they could prosper as a company yeah. whereas his 
for patent five, his was not the province. The province was gung ho, and they didn't have a problem with that. It was the city themselves because the building itself was uh, it was a historical building in its yep. historical area. So we had a hard time getting the distillery on its feet. So that and what he described, does anyone remember what he described about the uh, the fire fire chief, yeah. and fire marshal coming in? Anyone remember that? Most of those buildings had uh, fir timbers in them, exposed fir timbers, and that's was always no. a fire hazard with with the distilling. So the building he has now is all stone, and wasn't it the most modern warehouse in Canada at the time? Yes, and I yeah. love that. Was my second part was how he described the horses. Yeah, the horses oh, would yeah. come in, and he said so that inside the building there was ramps for the horses to go up. And around and up and around. So, and the description was so vivid, I could picture it at that point. So, he was a fantastic speaker. So, if he ever decides he wants to go out and do some other type of speaking, I think he could do very well. Yep. <laughs> Anyone else out there, other comments about Patent Five? I was surprised at how hard it is for them to do business in Manitoba, where you have to sell all your booze to the government and then they go sell it to the bars. They can't go direct to the bars. The boy, what a what a handicap that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it just I don't get it, but did yeah. he say they just started doing the uh what's it called farmers market too? That they were just able to do that recently? Uh, I don't remember that. I just remember that they couldn't because I looked yeah. before we went online, I looked at around the area and I looked at the bars close by and that's when I asked, Do you sell to this bar? No, we can't sell that to bar. We have to go to the government and then the bar has to go and get it from the government. Yeah, well, so, every province has their own rules. I think one thing that helps these guys stay in business is I think Uber has their headquarters just around the corner. So they get a lot of, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, millennials in there looking for, <laughs> looking oh, for a drink a every there too, oh, right? lunch. There's me, a, there brewery. a brewery just around the corner, I think. Too, around the corner. Yeah. 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 He was saying but, they were allowed to do farmer's markets, but they couldn't let anybody taste anything at the farmer's market. Like they weren't allowed to sample there yet. Yeah. Alberta was like that for a while too. Yes, yeah, so nope. it'll be like that soon. We're slowly, right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm going to go one kind of uh, last thoughts from everyone on the panel, if we can, from everyone from the very beginning to the end, or a general thought that you had in relation to one. So, Odd Society, Shelter Point, Doug Glass, Two Brewers, Eau Claire, Last Mountain, Pouton Five. Any of those, or all of them together, in some thought. And we're going to go in reverse order. So we're going to start with Nicole, if we could. Uh, I think the biggest last thought or general thought is even at this time where you can't necessarily travel, pick up the phone and call. Uh, most of these places are incredibly open to just talking. And if you've got questions, they want to answer it. And they want to tell you as much about what they have. Um, I know I've picked up the phone for a couple and sort of say, hey, can I get this? They're like, let us help you. And they just, <laughs> they want you to drink and they want you to experience what they're producing. But they want you, they want to share what they're producing. And there's just and an amazing product. amount of enthusiasm. So, yes. And yep. it's in our backyard. Kent, you're up. So I actually want to finish with a question. Dolph, did you learn the difference between these? You know what? I was looking for that and I couldn't find them. And I thought you might have been lying to me a second time because I was looking for the maraschino cherry clear. Well, I couldn't find it. And then Laura said, maybe he's lying to you a second time. Maybe you've, you've been pulling your leg for like three and a half months. So the answer is no. <laughs> I'm going to someone else. And any last thoughts? I'll let you do that after making fun of me. Oh, last thoughts. This has been, well, from Gavin's first book to this one, it has been such a, a ride for us. Um, honestly, I'm clearing my shelves of everything that I used to like to everything Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> you still like scotch. We like our scotch too. We know it. I, I do like my scotch, but the Canadian stuff is uh, is taking over. Yeah. Right. Good stuff. Let's go to the loving couple. Um, for me, it would have been a theme for two brewers, and it's also going to be a theme 
following through. Um, the sense of community that you get from all of the different distilleries, um, both when they're talking about the areas that they're in and um, why they do what they do and the passion that they have, um, there always seems to be the sense of community that comes through in the areas that they're working in. Okay. Thank you. Sure. And I, I found after going through this, um, opening my eyes and, and making, well, I'm sure it designed the year, like plan the trip, but heading out to other distilleries that we didn't cover. So like mm -hmm. the brand new uh, Crabby Goat out, in, out towards Grand Prairie. Um, and then there's another one that we visited in Grand Prairie and all the rest. So haven't made it into BC Okanagan yet or down east, but been starting to go around to a lot of the, uh, the distilleries in, um, in Alberta. So that was fun. Excellent. And I agree completely. Let's go, Blair. And then no, we're going to, oh, Dave, Dave, you're up. Yeah, Blair. I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> I mean, my comment's going to going to run from this half to the next half. It's just the enthusiasm, the passion of all the guys we've talked to. I mean, you just got to ask them a question and off they go. I mean, it's just amazing to hear what they're doing, what they're thinking, what they're doing locally. It's, 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 it's exciting. It's fun to watch and it's fun to listen to these guys. That's uh, it. Thank you, sir. And Blair. Yeah, there's um, what, these are seven distilleries out of, out of dozens and dozens and dozens of great distilleries that we could have chosen instead. Um, if you throw a dart at this map, you'll find a spot that makes delicious spirits. Um, before you do that, I suggest that you buy a second copy of your book if you're going to start chucking darts at it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Who would do such a thing? Well, you get a second copy, you can do whatever you want, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's that's the, the takeaway is that we covered seven great places and there's so many more to discover. So get out there when you can. Thank you, sir. And, Davin, we're going to finish with you. Well, I'm taking, I'm taking the same tack that Dave and Blair took. Yes, we covered seven distilleries. There are 20 times that many distilleries just in the west of Canada. A distillery we didn't visit. Sherryham, I'm I'm so keen about these guys. The whisk, they make fabulous whiskey, but I think we also need to remember that there are so many spirits more than whiskey. Some of the gins in Canada are just outrageously fabulous. We make great gin here. We make great fruit spirits. We make all kinds of great spirits here. So I'd really encourage people to branch out, visit some of the other distilleries. As I say, we visit seven. There are probably 140 great distilleries in just in Western Canada. And where's Sheringham from, Devin? They're uh, from, uh, well, they started in Shirley, uh, the British Columbia. They're now in Souk on Souk. Vancouver Island. It's a, it's oh, not too okay. far a drive from Victoria. And if you read the in the book, the Sheringham uh, story, you'll uh, see that it's actually a very interesting drive as well. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, everyone. We did an hour and two minutes. We are bang on. You guys are professionals. You are pros. Thank you. This, friends, has been a fantastic start to our evening and all the alcohol we're drinking as well. <laughs> thanks to our listeners. Thanks to our beautiful panel with us. Drew, Dave, Kent, Nicole, Sheila, Davin, Blair, absolute pleasure spending all this time with you. And Cheryl in the side. I can't see you, but we'll add you in there, Cheryl, because you're always there. <laughs> Pleasure having this time with you. Uh, we're moving our conversation from the first seven distilleries we visited this summer to the last distilleries that we ended off with last week. Uh, Co-authors Davin and Blair Phillips of, and let's say this, the whole thing, The Definitive Guide to Canadian Distilleries, the portable expert to over 200 distilleries and the spirits they make, will of course be joining us because what better summer activity is there than reminiscing about all the virtual traveling, conversing, and drinking we've done so far this year. Let's just keep thinking about it. It's astronomical what we actually did. And it's fall now, but whichever. It was all in the summer. Join us, please. Five minutes on this channel for our second retrospective broadcast of the night. And if you don't want to miss a minute of our next... Uh, sorry. And yeah, let's, let's list them. We're going to be doing 40 Creek, Last Draw... Weiser, uh, Stillwaters, Fist du Roi, Saint Laurent, and Newfoundland Distillery. Those are the people we're going to talk about for the next hour. And uh, please come back. And if you don't want to miss a minute, 
like, subscribe, come back later. Come back next week where we talk about bourbon for the first time, I think. It'd be a lot of fun. So, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a little bit of my Negroni left. It's going to be gone. And I will see you all in five minutes. Thank you very much. And cheers, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers. Have a Cheers. Slancha. Are you, are you sending us?